just turning into the road now, Sarge. Mr. Sansom? Yes. That's the house upstairs. Uh -huh. You found it, did you? No, I didn't find it. Mr. Kelly found it. Where is Mr. Thing. Kelly, please? He's upstairs Mr. now with the body. Okay. She hasn't got no clothes on. Twelve years. Fifteen in all. That three years is a wooden top. You've been a DC for 12 years. Yep. Now you're asking yourself, how come he stayed a DC for so long, right? Yeah, well, as it happens twice, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were. What are you doing? I, um, nothing. You, Mr. Kelly? Yes, uh, yes, it was me who found her. I haven't done nothing. Wait outside. What's the matter? You what? heard what I said? Wait outside. Outside, please, Mr. Kelly. Taff. Taffy, do you think he was... You've been on a suicide job before, Jim? Yeah, one or two. I've been on dozens. Makes you think about life. Forces you to ask yourself a lot of questions. Makes you very angry as well. Thought you were lumbered with that suicide number. Do I look that silly? Lord Tosh and Jimmy are on it, and the best of British. Hello. Yes, yes, I'd like to book a table for two, please. Yes, for tonight. Um, 8.30 for nine? Roach. Yes, thank you very much. Again? You must have it bad. All I did was book a table at a restaurant. As my old mum used to say, it'll all end in tears. People are beginning to talk, Ted. Mike, you're obviously confusing me with someone who gives a monkeys. You can get nicked for parking on the pavement, you know. Oh, I love it when you talk dirty to me, Viv. What's the score then, sweetheart? 18-year-old female. Looks like suicide by gas. Oh, yeah. You, Tane, you know, one of them portable jobs. Yeah. Bloke living in the ground floor flat, came home from night shift, smelt the gas, went upstairs to investigate and found the body. Uh. If we don't oppose bail, it'll look suspect. Ted, you've got to stop thinking like you and start thinking like him. Lenny Pless hasn't got a brain. He'll be so chuffed at getting his liberty, he'll never cotton on. He'll do a runner. He'll have it away in his arches the moment he's outside that courthouse. I'll have a brown one with you. But he leads us straight to Danny Wilson. And that's a tow rag I'm after. Morning, Inspector. Morning. Right, well, we'll let him run for a while. I've just got to have a word with the Inspector. In Inspector? Yes, Sergeant. Look, I'm due in a meeting. Tonight I booked a table for 8.30. Ted, I thought we'd no, agreed. No, you know, no harm done. I'm just filling you in on the place case. It's not that stupid. Look, I've got to go. Look, I, I know I broke our rule, but I can't help it. You have that effect on me. OK, I'll meet you there. I want to sleep and never wake up again. But she's only a kid. Was son. Was a kid. I don't care for this world anymore, and nobody cares for me. Jenny Clayford. Socko. Yeah, on their way. Uh, what about this bloke downstairs, the bloke who found her? Mr. Kelly. Yeah, him. Bit of a pervert, you reckon, do you? I told you what we saw when we came in. What did you see, love? The man was moving away from the body in a highly suspicious manner. Yeah, well, people react in lots of ways to a body. A sort of morbid fascination. Find me the typewriter, Tuffy. Eh? The note was typed. She must have a typewriter somewhere. Make it quick, will you? As you can see, I'm up to my neck. You worry too much, Chrissy. You want to learn to relax. What do you want, Frank? Nothing. Just came in for a chat. Well, thank you, but another time. I haven't got the time at the minute. All right. Another time. Yeah. Can I uh, give you a bit of advice, Christine? Drop Ted Roach out. You can do better than that. Mind your own damn business, Frank. All right. But the first hint of it affecting his work, 
and I'll make it my business. Know what I mean? Inspector, shove your business. <laughs> Full bath. Was the light on or off, love? On. Oh. Mm. Still damp. Tape collector's in the bedroom. Right, now listen carefully, Taffy. Get yourself a piece of paper and put it in the machine. And press keys R, D and L. Got it? Yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, use a pencil. Don't whatever you do, touch the keys. I want to check them for dabs. Oh, and check what sort of heater's in there. Well, there isn't one. It's the one she moved into the living room. You can see where it was. I see. Tosh, do you know something we don't know? It's not something I know that you don't know, sweetheart. It's more like something I feel that you don't. Tosh, the Socko's here. Right. Oi, dreamboat. Mm. Morning all. Sorry, Sorry, I was miles away. Specy. Yeah, take a pill. So what's a smart young couple like you think of their new DC lines then? Oh, I don't know. He's not been here long enough. Yeah, Mike, think about that. Now listen. What I'm really interested in is what is the SP on Ted Roach and Inspector Fraser? Oh, dear. Like a bunch of old washerwomen, you lot. <laughs> now, Mike, you can tell us, listen. <clears throat> is he giving it some or what? Oh, please. Suckler's ever Alec? <laughs> I hate these places. Morning. Hi. Sorry to leave you here. Only the decorators are painting the offices. No problem, Doc. Jenny Clayford. Yeah, how quickly can you move on this one, Doc? Do I gather you're not entirely satisfied that all is what it appears, Inspector? Uh, Constable, Mum. Detective Constable. Sorry. Don't be, I'm not. And yes, I don't think uh, everything is quite what it's supposed to be. Anything in particular you want me to look for? The full works. Inspector. <laughs> Constable, I am fairly certain that by the coloration of her skin that that young woman died from a suicide. Of asphyxia, yes, I know that. I'm just not happy about it being a suicide. <sighs> All right. Full works you want, full works you'll get. Tardot. If I weren't a married man with five kids, I'd buy you a drink. <laughs> and if I weren't a married woman with three kids, I'd let you. <laughs> well, they do. Now... Heads up. There he comes. He'll do a runner. Chance in a million. It doesn't state how long you've worked as a hospital porter, Mr. Kelly. What does that matter? Well, not a lot, really. Just interested. How long, Mr. Kelly? Ten years. Ten years? Hmm. That's a long time. You must like the job. Well, it's a living. Why are you asking me all these questions? I didn't do nothing. All I did was find her. Just routine, Mr. Kelly. Ten years at the Mile Point Hospital. Yeah. You were seen touching that dead girl's body, Mr. Kelly? No, I, I didn't do you nothing. You were touching her? No, I weren't. Did I you weren't. ever try to touch her when she was alive? That's filthy. You can't say things like that to me. It says in your statement that when you came home from work, you smelt gas. You went upstairs to investigate and found her dead on the sofa. Yeah, that's right. Uh, she, she was just laying there. Then what did you do, Mr. Kelly? Then what? Well, how, how did you know she was dead? I, I just knew. I, uh, I, I, I see dead bodies. You know, I work in hospital. I see dead bodies every day. What did you do next, Mr. Kelly? I opened windows. I didn't turn off the gas first, Mr. Kelly. That's the next thing I did. Then what? I, I, I went next door and um, asked Mr. Sansom to phone for you lot. Well, why didn't you phone us from a flat? She had a phone there. Well, uh, I didn't realise she had a flat in her kitchen, a phone in her kitchen. I, I'd never been up in that flat before. Uh, Never been in her flat before. As I just said, never. I never had no reason to. How do you think there was a phone in the kitchen, then? Uh, what? You just said, how was I to know there was a phone in the kitchen? If you'd never been in the flat before, how do you know where the phone was? 
Oh, look, this is, this is crazy. Just routine, Mr Kelly? So how about the phone bit then? Well, uh, after I, I got Mr Sansom to phone for you lot, I went back and had, had a look round. What for, Mr Kelly? I don't know, I just did. Look, it's not every day you find a body. You said you see him every day. Yes, I know, I did. Is that why you were touching him, Mr Kelly? I didn't touch her. You're filthy. You ever been in trouble with the police, Mr Kelly? No. You sure, Mr Kelly? We can soon check our records. I said, no, why are you asking me all these questions? Can you type, Mr Kelly? What? Type, can you type, Mr Kelly? It's a simple enough question. No. Yes or no? No. You sure, Mr Kelly? Because I'm sure I never typed in my life. Look, I, I don't know this, I want to go home. Relax, Mr Kelly. I know my rights, you can't keep me here. Don't get wound up, Mr Kelly. Just a few more questions and you can go home. OK. I've, I've told you everything I know already. Just routine, Mr Kelly. It's super sleuth. You know, there's only one thing worse than a smart black copper. Yeah, and it's a smart black good-looking copper. <laughs> yeah, mate, too. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, mate. I'm going to have to give it a miss on the bowling tonight. It's all right. Taffy's already marked me card. Well, I know that makes sense, but Oops. the same thing is that we're going to end up up to our necks in the smelling no, stuff, right? Point. Oh, heads up. See, idea you're looking for clues. There's probably enough contraband hidden in your locker, so I should keep me busy for years. Tut, 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 young man. You used to be one of us, eh? Yeah. So what's the SP on this suicide, then? I don't know how people can do themselves in. Ugh. Well, that's the reason why I can't make it tonight, Yorkie. My partner reckons it's not a suicide. Oh, that's what all the two and phone's been about, then. Yeah, Tosh and Burnside are super now. He wants a 12-hour detainment on our suspects. He's all right in that Tosh, isn't he? Does he ever change his shirts, Jim? Yeah, regularly. Once a week, every Monday. Jeez, I wouldn't like to be on an obo at the back end of a week with him. <laughs> you know he's got five kids, don't you? Five? five. Doesn't look <laughs> like he's got it in him. <laughs> So you reckon got a murder on your hands then, do you? Well, I don't reckon it at all, Sarge. I think Tosh is making a bit of a meal of it. I, th I reckon he just likes playing a sleuth, that's all. Always of experience talking here, eh? Heads. Look, I just can't see how someone can kill someone like that. I mean, how do you make someone lay down with nothing on and make them stay there till he gets them? Knock them out first. But there's no marks on the body. Have a good look then, did you? That's not funny. Tosh is a good copper. Yeah, he's been a DC for 12 years. I mean, he doesn't exactly inspire confidence, does it? Well, mine's a partner, Guinness, whoever's in the chair. Yeah, well, I've been a sergeant for nigh on 20 years. Oh. Oh. So, convince me, Tosh. Why should we hold your Mr Kelly overnight? Well, sir, for starters, I found it a little strange that a young woman gets straight out of a bath and tops herself. Well, who can say what goes on in the mind of a suicide? OK, sir. The gas heater. It had been moved from its place in the woman's bedroom to the living room. You mean why the sofa rather than the bed? Eight out of ten non-violent suicide victims choose the comfort of a bed. I mean, rather than cutting the wrists or throwing themselves off a building. Point taken. What about the note? No, no doubt it was typed in her machine, sir. I'm positive the lab report will confirm this. Interesting thing is that when Socko dusted down the machine, we didn't turn up one print. What, wiped? That's the only answer, Gov. I mean, why should a young girl type a suicide note and then wipe the machine clean? The portable gas heater was wiped clean as well. Well, I'm convinced. Why is Kelly top of your list? When Edwards and Martella arrived on the scene, they found him moving away from the girl's body. I think he was wiping her mouth. He lost me there, Tosh. Why would he do that? I reckon he was trying to wipe away traces of whatever it was he used to put her out. Well, like chloroform? Well, he works in a hospital, Gov. Look, sir, I just want to hold him until we get the toxicology report and the full SP from the Socko. Motive? That's an old-fashioned term these days, Gov. This is a waste of time. It's only a waste of time because you've got one on tonight. He could be in there until closing time. Friend Wilson might show. No chance. I've booked the table. All right. You're a grand lad. Want you back by midnight? 
I'll get a cab. If you're not here, I'll go on to his gaff, okay? Ted. Well, don't let me down. Who? Me? <laughs> What's the score in her family? Right. Parents are divorced. Father left the country three years ago and is now living in Canada. From letters found in the flat, we traced her mother to an address in Glasgow. Glasgow police have checked it out, but it appears she moved some weeks ago. Current address unknown. Blank. So far, Glasgow police are still on it, sir. Yeah, OK, yeah. Mm. Jim? Well, she worked as a sales girl in the West End shoe store. She's been there just over a year. According to the manageress, Jenny was a normal, happy-go-lucky girl, good at a job and well-liked. Boyfriend? No one regular. According to one of her workmates, Jenny just liked going out with her friends and having a good time. She put it about what? Well, not according to one of her ex-boyfriends. He reckons it took him over two months to get her between the sheets. Oh, cheers, love. Oh, yeah. Did you check him out? Yep. David Grant. He works for British Telecom. He and Jenny parted the best of friends about eight months ago. He now lives with his girlfriend out at Chingford, but he's a non-runner guff. Look, I must admit, I'm a bit in the dark about this one. If you're in the dark, Jim, that's down to you. We walked into this one together. At the same time, you saw exactly what I saw. Then I must have missed something. Yeah, and it's very easy. When well, you're not looking in the first place. All right, all right, so it was murder. What's the motive? I don't know at this time, Jim. But you answer me this. What was her motive? For topping herself. Uh, Bob, is that what you're looking for? Oh, cheers, just my knee. Thanks. Oh, by the way, middle relief, they didn't follow up in the air gun business. Ah, didn't they? Yeah, look at this, look. Mm. Middle relief, pass it on to night relief. Yeah, night don't relief. tell me night relief, pass, pass it on to us. It's like pass the parcel. <laughs> Ted. Rough night, Ted. Yeah, you haven't seen my dash around at all. Well, it's time in the morning, you must be kidding. Well, you two are keen. Somebody's looking for you, Ted. Well, uh, Mike. Yeah, he's popped down a canteen for some nosh, and he's not a happy man. That's putting it mildly. Come on, Jim, let's go and see the doc. Oh, great. All right, then, Inspector. Tut, tut, tut. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Detective Constable, married with five children. You got it. <laughs> Jenny Clayford. Thanks. Right. First off, the young woman died of asphyxia due to gas inhalation. Using gas chromatography, the extent of inhalation was close on 90%. As I'm sure you already know, Inspector Constable, 51% is enough to cause fatal poisoning. Time of death? Between 6 and 8 a.m. Alcohol? I went for the brain rather than the muscle and liver tissue. Or kidney and spleen. I see you know a little bit about toxicology. No, I'm just trying to show off in front of my partner here. <laughs> 0 0.03 on the trace. Normal. She hadn't been drinking. <sighs> Sex? She had had intercourse within an hour before her death. Was there any sign of force used? Oh, he talks. <laughs> no. No signs of a struggle and nothing under the fingernails. Consent? Maybe not. Chloroform, right? 0.58 on the trace. Even allowing for absorption, enough to render her unconscious. So she was unconscious when intercourse took place? Very probably. I have taken a sample. I knew you would. I think we just discovered an old-fashioned term. I'm sorry, mate. Stuff it, Ted. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. That's the last time. Don't ever ask me to cover for you again. Well, nothing happened, did it? That's not the point, and you know it. You said you'd be back at midnight. All right, I blew it. Yes, you did. I'm sorry. I don't want to know. I really don't want to know. You pulled a stroke on me. Oh, come on. You just don't listen, do you? As it happens, you're right, Michael. My office. Now, Ted. Thanks very much, mate. Oh, never down to you, is it? It's always someone else. Why, Mr. Kelly? We know you did it, Mr. Kelly. We just want to know why. You don't know I did it. You left a fingerprint on one of the 50 pence pieces, old son. I didn't. We found a bottle of chloroform in your dustbin, Mr. Kelly. That don't prove nothing. Have you ever heard of genetic fingerprinting, Mr. Kelly? We know you had sex with a girl after you put her out. And we can match you up. No problem. 
We've got you, Mr. Kelly. We know. You murdered her. Well, just tell us why. All right. You've been so clever catching me, haven't you? Yeah. I did it. I've got to tell you why. You're so smart. You find out. I'm not telling you. <laughs> Sarge? Hello, Jim. What are you having? Yeah. Right, have a pint of the usual, please. A pint of Guinness there, please. Oh, that Tosh is one right clever cop. Yeah, I heard you had a good result, didn't you? He's brilliant. I just can't work out why. But why is so good? So why he's been a DC for 12 years. I mean, he's good enough to go up the ladder. Well, have you thought of asking him the reason? Well, of course I have. All he does is give me that soppy grin and taps the side of his nose. Why did the chicken cross the road? Eh? Why did that bloke gas that lovely young girl? Well, that's another thing, Sarge. The bloke wouldn't tell us why he did it, and that seemed to upset Tosh more than anything. Cheers. Well, I can understand that. I mean, he did it, we got him, that's the main thing. I mean, ours is not to reason why. Oh, that's just the point, Jim. Ours is to reason why. I mean, if we don't reason, if we don't ask the question why, then we're not doing the job properly. I mean, if we don't learn to prevent, how can we learn without learning the question why? <sighs> anyway, I'm fed up. I'm sick and tired of asking the question why, so I'm going to go home, I'm going to kick the cat, I'm going to give the old woman a hard time, then I'm going to go to bed, come here in the morning and start all over again. I'll see you. Eh? See you later, Sarge. Sarge? Yeah. Why? <laughs>